Today we are going to be talking about 7.4. Yesterday we did all about adding and subtracting equations. Today we're going to be solving multiplication and division equations. Go ahead and write down these rules for me. As you guys wrote down these rules, did you notice anything about them? Have you ever seen these before? Where? Yesterday, when we were adding and subtracting, these were the same exact rules. The very first thing that you want to do is identify the variable. What is a variable? A number that represents a letter. A letter that represents a number. Okay, so it's any letter of the alphabet. Then, next up, number two, we want to move the number that's keeping the variable from being alone with an inverse operation. So basically all that's saying is get the variable by itself. Once you've done that, you have to do it with an inverse operation. What does inverse mean? Opposite. opposite. What's the opposite of addition? Subtraction. subtraction. Okay, so yesterday we did addition and subtraction. Today we're working on multiplication. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. division. And what's the opposite of division? Multiplication. multiplication. So all the problems today are going to have to do with multiplication and division. There's one key rule I want you to remember. Number three, what's it say? Once again, be fair. Just like at home, you want your parents to be fair to you and your siblings. We have to be fair to all of the numbers as we are working on things today in our math equations. Example number one is asking us to solve the equation and then check our solution. So let's just look at the first problem we have here. 4x equals 60. Whenever you have a number directly next to a variable, what do you have to do to that number? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide it. Multiply. 4x means the same thing as 4 times x or 4 times x, but the way that I want you to write it is just like that. So now we've got to figure out how to get rid of that multiply by x or multiply by 4. What's the opposite of multiplying by 4? Divide by 4. So we're trying to get rid of that 4 right there. If you remember, we're thinking of it as this is the left side of the problem and that is the right side of the problem. It's always divided by the equal sign. So I want to get rid of that multiply by 4, so I have to divide by 4. Then what should I do to the right side? Because I have to be fair. Same you do to the right side, you got to do to the left side. Do the same exact thing. So what am I going to do? 60 divided by 4. Now, let's go ahead and look at this part right here. 4x over 4. What can happen to those 4 divided by 4? What is 4 divided by 4? Zero. Not 0. One. 1. If I have 4 people and I put them into 4 different groups, there's going to be 1 person in each group. So 4 divided by 4 equals 1. Do I need to write this? 1x. No. That's an understood 1 there. So you can just simply write x equals, and what is 60 divided by 4? 15. 15. So x equals 15 is your answer. We also have to check this. Whenever we're checking, let's go back to the original problem. This is what the original problem said. 4 times x equals 60. Now remember, I really want to see you guys with these equal signs all lined up right there so your problem looks nice and neat. So keep the equal signs underneath each other. 4 times x equals 60. Do I know what x is? Yes. What is it? 15. So do I just stick the 15 there? No, I want you to go ahead and put it in parentheses because we know that means to multiply. What is 4 times 15? 60. All right, so you're going to rewrite that 60 down here, drop down your equal sign, and there's your 60. Does 60 equal 60? Yes. Yes, it does. Problem B says 2x equals 56. What is not allowing the variable to be by itself? A 2. Not just a plain old 2. What do I have to do to the 2? Multiply by 2, okay? So multiply by 2 is right there, and I'm trying to get rid of it. What's the opposite of multiply by 2? Divide. divide by 2. 2, okay? Whenever we're doing divide, I want you guys to go ahead and just use that fraction bar. JD, what should I do next? Okay, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so it cancels out to plain old x. Okay, 56 divided by 2 is 28. Gabby, check it for me. I want to go ahead and write the original problem. And now what am I going to replace? Get rid of that x. And what am I doing with it? Just changing it to a 28. Put multiply by 28. Okay. Katie, what is 2 times 28? 56. And does 56 equal 56? Yes. 
problems C and D are very similar to the last two problems we just did, but this time I'm bringing in a negative number, okay? Just remember, it's an integer. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative. So right here I have negative 3a equals 63. What's the variable? A. Okay, remember that's the letter. I want to get A all by itself. What is not allowing A to be alone? Not negative 3. What do I say? I want the operation with it. Multiply by negative 3. Okay, a lot of people are trying to tell me that this means to subtract 3. It does not mean to subtract 3 because remember, if you have an integer directly next to a letter, you always have to multiply it. So what is the opposite of multiply by negative 3? Divide by negative 3. Rule number three, read to me what it says in your notes that you wrote today. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. We've got to be fair. Go ahead and divide by three on the other side, too. Carlos, what is negative three divided by negative three? Negative. Not negative one. If you ever have two negative numbers, it cancels out and becomes a what? A positive. Okay, so negative 3 divided by negative 3 equals 1, right? So I've got 1a, but remember you don't have to put that 1. It's kind of an understood 1 right there. Equals, what is 63 divided by negative 3? Negative 21 is correct. Box it in because that's our answer, but now we want to check it. Landon, help me check it. Okay, what am I writing down? Negative 3 times... Not 21. Uh, negative 21 equals 63. 63. Okay, you want to just do whatever the original problem says. Michael, help me with this right here. Negative 3 times negative 21. Um, 63. 63. Bring down your equals 63. Do those two equal each other? Yes. Yes, it does. Next up, this one's a little bit tricky. It says negative x equals 15.5. What's my variable? X. x. Is x by itself? No. No. What's with it? Negative. A negative number, okay? So what number is that if it's just a negative number? Negative, negative 1. So I can kind of slip in a negative 1 right there. So if I were to divide this, on the left-hand side, what am I trying to get rid of? The negative 1. Not just plain old negative 1. What's the operation that goes with it? Oh, multiply. Multiply by negative 1. Asia, what's the opposite of multiply by negative 1? Divide by negative 1. Read me rule number 3. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. That's just about being fair. Help me out, Isabel. Um, out All right, this cancels out to a 1, and I'm left with plain old? X. X equals... It doesn't equal 15.5. Remember, if you ever have one negative number, your answer will always be what? A negative number. It will always be a negative number, so what's my answer? Negative 15.5. That is correct. Notice this interesting operation. If you see, this was a negative x, and all we ended up doing really with doing all that was we bumped the negative over to that side with all the work that you just did. Okay, let's plug it back in. Jakari, help me out with how to plug that in. You are correct. Equals what? Equals 15.5. 15.5. So, Alex, if I have two negative numbers multiplied by each other, will my answer be positive or negative? The two negatives will turn into a positive, okay? So, Alex, what's my answer? What's negative 1 times negative 15.5? Positive 15.5 equals positive 15.5. Is that true? Yeah. Yes, it does. X divided by 6 equals 12. First thing, identify the variable, which is? Uh, X. X. What is not allowing X to be by itself? Not just 6. Mm -hmm. Tell me the operation. Divide. divide by 6. What is the opposite of divide by 6? Multiply. Multiply by 6. What I do to one side, you, must do to, the other you side. must do to the other side. Help me out, Kyla. What 
What do I do on the left side? Um, becomes a one. All right, this becomes a 1, so I'm left with plain old x on the left side equals... Let's check it out, JD. Seventy-two over six. Okay, and what is seventy-two divided by six? Twelve. So we did learn that did check out, which means seventy-two is our answer. Next one, I want you to try to do it on your own. All right, what is not allowing my variable to be alone? Thank you for telling me divide. Divide by negative 5.5. How do I get rid of divide by negative 5.5? You put on negative 5.5. You multiply by negative 5.5 because that is the opposite. What you do to one side, you must <laughs> do to the other side to be fair. We know that this cancels out, and I'm left with x equals. When you put this into your calculator, what did you find x equals? 198. Now all you need to do is check it, so I'm simply going to take my original problem right here and rewrite it down here. Instead of doing x, I'm going to put 198 divided by negative 5.5 equals negative 36. Is that true? It is true. It does equal negative 36, so it does check out. How many of you got that right on your own? The slide tells us if the number you need to move is a fraction, you're going to multiply it by the reciprocal. Do you guys remember what a reciprocal is? It's when you flip a fraction. Okay, so let's say that I had the fraction 6 sevenths. What would the reciprocal be? 7 sixths. Let's say that I had um, 5 thirds. What would the reciprocal be? 3 fifths. Okay, so all you're doing is you're just flipping the fraction to uh, what it looks opposite of that one. So, 3 fourths times y equals 12. What is not allowing the y to be by itself? Three Multiply by 3 fourths. Okay, so instead of the opposite, for us, we would normally think, okay, divide by 3 fourths. But do you guys remember KFC? Keep the first, flip the second, change the sign. So what we're doing when we just flip it to the reciprocal, we're doing the KFC method. We are dividing by three-fourths, but when you divide by three-fourths, you are actually multiplying by four-thirds. So let's go ahead. When you're trying to get rid of a fraction, just remember the rule. Right next to it, flip it or put the reciprocal there. Remember rule number three says what you do to one side... You must, do to the other. you must do to the other side. So I had a 12 here. What should I multiply it by? 12 over 1. No, 12 over 12. I have to multiply it by the same thing I multiplied the left side by. What did I multiply the left side by? 4 over 3. 4 over 3. So I've got to multiply by the same exact thing. Remember, I've got to be fair. Multiply by 4 thirds. Now, if you want to, 12 is the same thing as 12 over 1. Sometimes that helps people whenever they're multiplying fractions. So help me out with this one right here. What happens to 4 thirds times 3 fourths? It becomes a 1. It becomes a 1, all right? This turns into a 1. This turns into a 1. And overall, you're basically canceling that out, and you're just left with the Y. Is there anything I can cancel out on the right side? Yes. What is it? 3 and 12 four times. 3 and 12, because the 3 goes into 12 four times. So now just multiply across. What's 4 times 4? Four? 16. 16, and then 1 times 1? One? 1. 1. So you could do 16 over 1, but that is not necessary, so that just means it equals 16. Now you've got to go back and double-check it to make sure that that makes sense. What did my original problem say? 3 fourths multiplied by 3 fourths. 3 fourths multiplied by, what am I going to put instead? 16. 16, which is 16 over 1, and it's supposed to equal 12. Is there anything I can cross-reduce? Yes, the 4 and 16 becomes a what? 4. 1 and 4. What is 3 times 4? 12. 12. Is that what I wanted it to be? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So it does uh, work out. All right. What is not allowing the variable to be alone? Not just 3 tenths. Not just negative 3 tenths. Multiply by negative 3 tenths is still there. I've got to get rid of it. Whenever I have a fraction, there's a trickier thing I have to do. It's not just the opposite, but what do I have to do? Um, work. 
multiply by the reciprocal, okay? What I like to do is kind of attach this to something. So I'm going to stick that right there on the negative 3 tenths. You can choose to do it 3 over negative 10. Either one's fine, okay? So right here, I'm going to have negative 3 over 10 n equals negative 5. I have to multiply by the reciprocal. What is the reciprocal of that right there? Okay, 10 over negative 3. Once again, it does not matter which place you or which number you put that negative on. Either one's fine, okay? So what happens to this right here? It cancels, it cancels out. out. So I can basically say that's gone, and I'm left with just an n. But if I multiplied that left side times 10 over negative 3, I have to multiply the same thing, 10 over negative 3. Once again, it doesn't matter if you did negative 10 over 3 or 10 over negative 3. It means the same exact thing. And this is like 5 over 1. Is there anything that I can cross-reduce? No. Nope, there's nothing. Okay, so let's just work the top first. What's negative 5 times 10? 50. Negative 50 over what's 1 times negative 3? Negative 3, okay? If I have two negatives, what do they become? Positive. A positive. So my answer is n equals 50 over 3. That is the answer. Let's go back to the original problem. It said negative 3 over 10 multiplied by, now we know that means 50 over 3, equals negative 5. Is there anything I can cross-reduce? 10, 10 and 5 becomes? 1 and 5. 1 and 5. What is, just do the numerators first, negative 3 times 5? 15. That is 15, not just 15. Um, hold on. Let's see. Is there anything else before we do that that we can cross-reduce? The 3s, three. the okay? Because this will actually make it a little bit easier. This is going to be a 1, and this will be a what? Yeah. Not a 1 negative 1. Okay, you got to still keep that negative number there. Now let's multiply. What's negative 1 times 5? Negative 5 over a 1 equals negative 5. Okay? Don't second guess yourself then. Always go back. If you check your work, then you can help yourself to know if it was right or not. Okay, this problem, I'm trying to get the variable by itself. What is not allowing the x to be alone? So Add 6.3. What's the opposite of add 6.3? Subtract, Subtract 6.3. What I do to one side? Must you must be side. fair and do to the other side. This right here cancels out, and all I'm left with is x equals what? 3.1. 3.1. Once you've done that, all you do to check is just replug it in. 6.3 plus 3.1 equals 9.4. To check this out, I'm taking this right here and I'm going to put my answer underneath it. When you add that together, you find out that it's 9.4 and it does in fact equal 9.4. Tonight's homework is this right here, just 10 problems. Great job listening today.